Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, all paths from source to target. So before I get started with the question, uh, if there's any lead code question you want me to solve specifically, just let me know down in the comments and I'll try to get it solved for you. All right. Anyway, so in this question, we're given a directed acyclic graph of n nodes. We need to find all the possible paths from node 0 to node n minus 1 and return them in any order. So the graph is as follows. So, okay, anyways, so we're given this as an input. And I know this looks kind of confusing, so let's just break it down. And let's first understand what does the input actually mean and what do we need to really output in this question. All right, so this is the input that we're given. And let's try to understand what this actually means. So to do that, what we need to do is let's uh, first write down where the index each element is at. So 1 comma 2 is at the index 0, 3 is at the index 1, this is at the index 2, and this is at the index 3. So each of these indices represents the node. So at index 0, so 0, that is connected to node 1 and 2. So 0 connects to 1 and 2. Similarly, node 1 over here, because this has the index 1, connects to number 3. So we're going to connect that to 3. Similarly, the second node is also connected to 3. And the third node has nothing, it's an empty list. So that means that it's not connecting to anything. So this is the graph that we're going to have. So this is what the input actually means. Now let's try to understand what does the question want from us. So what the question is asking is, we need to find all possible ways to get from 0 to the last node. So the last node is nothing else but n minus 1. So in this case, that's going to be 3. So we need to get from 0 to 3. And uh, what does n minus 1 mean? It's just the length of our input minus 1. So our input has a length of 4, so 4 minus 1. That's it. All right, so we need to find all the ways that we can get from 0 all the way to 3. So let's look at the first way. All right, so now we're going to start at 0. And we can either go to 2 or we can go to 1. So let's just go to 2 in the beginning. So now we went to 2. And from 2 to get to 3, there's only one way, 2 to 3. So what do we do? We started off at 0, we went to 2, and from 2 we went to 3. So this is going to be one of our answers. Now let's look at our second answer. So instead of going to 2, we can go to 1. From 0, to, we can go to 1. And from 1, we can go to 3. So that's our second solution. So we have 0, comma, 1, comma, 3. And these are going to be our two solutions. And this is what we're going to output. So now, how can we actually solve this? So to solve this, we can take two approaches. We can take a depth-first approach or a breadth-first approach. So in order to solve this question, we're going to be taking a breadth-first search approach. So let's see how we can do that. So over here, I'm going to have our results, right? And we're also going to implement a queue in order to solve this. All right. So now that we have this, we're first going to Add a, the, our queue is going to start off with having a zero, and each for each time we're going to pop out that element. And before we pop it out, we're going to check if the last element is equal to our target. So what is our target? Is the length of our input minus one, so four minus one, which equals to three. So we see if the last element of whatever we pop out is equal to zero. So we're going to pop this out, and is zero equal to three? Obviously not. So now what we're going to do, since it's not equal to 3, we're not going to do anything to results, but we're going to look for zeros neighbors. So first, let's look at its first neighbor. It, one of its neighbors is 1, 0 to 1, right? So we're going to add that to our queue, 0, 1. So does it have any other neighbors? It does. It has 0 and 2. So 0 is connected to 2. So we're going to add that to our queue as well, 0, 2. Now again, now we're going to go back to our queue and we're going to check if the last element is equal to 3. And over here, 1 is not equal to 3. So we're going to pop this out. And now we're going to look for its neighbor. We're going to look for the last element's neighbors. So we're looking for 1's neighbors. 
So in this case, one is pointing to three. So we're going to add that to our queue. So we're going to add zero comma one comma three. All right, so we got this added. Similarly, we're going to go to zero comma two. Again, two is not equal to three. So we're going to look for two's neighbors, which is three. And then we're going to add that to our queue again. So zero comma two comma three. Now, when we go, when we pop this element out, what happens is the last element is equal to three. So that means that we've reached from this beginning to our target. So we're going to add this to our results. So to our results, we're going to add zero comma one comma three. Similarly, we're going to pop this element out as well. And then the last element is also three. So we're going to add that again. So zero comma two comma three. So and now there's nothing else inside of our queue and we're done with the question. And this is the answer that we have. So now let's implement this in Python and let's see how that looks like. So we're going to start off with initializing our queue. So our queue is going to have a list. It's going to be a list. And the first element is going to be an, a list with the value of zero. So that's how our queue is going to start off. And we're going to also initialize a result, which is going to be an empty list. And we're going to have our target which is nothing else but the length of the graph minus one. Okay, so now we're gonna put it inside of a while loop, which is gonna keep going until uh, we have a value in our queue. So while queue is not equal to none, we're gonna go inside of our while loop. Over here, we're gonna set a temporary variable. So this is gonna just be whatever we pop out. So queue.pop, and then we're gonna pop out the zeroth element. You could also implement a DQ from collections, but I'm just going to do this for now. All right. So now we're going to check if the last element of that temporary variable or whatever we popped out is equal to our target. So if temp, now the last element is at the index of negative one is equal to target, then in that case, we're going to add that to our results uh, target. Okay. So now result dot append and then we're going to add that temporary variable all right else so if that is not the case what we need to do is we need to look for its neighbors and how can we do that so let me just write it down and then i'll explain it so for neighbor in graph so we're going to our graph over here and we're going to look at the whatever is at the last index so temp negative one so this is what was popped was the last element of what we popped out. And we want to look for those, for its neighbors. And the best way to do that is we go to that index in the graph. So that's how we get all of its neighbors. So now we have all of its neighbors and we're going to add that to our queue. So queue.append, we're going to add the temporary variable plus the neighbor inside of a list. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to go, we're going to keep going inside of our while loop until we have nothing left inside our queue. And once we exit that, we're going to return our result. All right, so let's submit this and see what happens. All right, and as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, again, if there is any question you want me to solve specifically, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to solve it. And thanks a lot for watching and do let me know what you thought about the video. Thank you.